Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Zefia Mamgulieva, currently working as a medical oncologist at the National Center of Oncology in Azerbaijan. Uh, I would like to send huge thanks to SkyTech Central Conference for organizing today's 13th International Conference on Biomedical and Cancer Research, and also giving me this opportunity to present my case report, which is called a case of lung squamous cancer associated with scleroderma and rare metastasis to the small intestine. I'm just moving on to the slides. Uh, I would like to uh, emphasize the core of my abstract. The possibility of small bowel metastasis should pay attention in patients with lung cancer and involvement of small bowel in systemic sclerosis, which presenting with an acute abdomen. The purpose of this abstract is to clarify about acute abdomen and discuss the various differential diagnoses of perforation of the small bowel. We know the systemic sclerosis is a chronic multi-system disease characterized by widespread vascular dysfunction and progressive fibrosis of the skin and internal organs. During the first decade after the onset of scleroderma, the majority of patients developed and malignancy. The previous multiple studies showed that the relative lung cancer risk is shown to be 3.5% to 7.3 times higher in intestinal lung disease with lung cancer occurrence estimated at 10-20% uh, uh, in intestinal lung disease, with, uh, with more than 15% of intestinal lung disease patients likely to die from lung cancer. Intestinal lung disease incidence upon estimated uh, upon lung cancer diagnosis varied from uh, 2.4 uh, uh, to 10.9%. Uh, I want to talk about also uh, etiology and physiopathology about uh, underlying disease, which include their uh, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis and uh, intestinal lung disease, which, uh, which uh, increased the incidence of, uh, incidence of lung cancer. Uh, we know the smoking and uh, or exposure in, in, to chemicals uh, is the most common risk factors for lung cancer. Idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis must be distinguished from other intestinal lung disease. And like carcinogenesis, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, physio, uh, physiopathology is primarily based on epithelial da damage and repair abnormalities and uh, epithelial transformational, uh, transformation and this mesenchymal transition. Whereas for the other intestinal lung uh, disease subtypes, inflammation and immune suppression are paramount features. So epithelial layer abnormalities like hyperplasia uh, of pulmonary cells, cuboidal cells, and mucous cells, along with epithelial metaplasia uh, within fibrotic regions, were demonstrated in idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. Epithelial metaplasia appears linked to cancerogenesis and uh, with transition zones from metaplasia and uh, to invasive cancer uh, located close to fibrotic area. Histone deacetylase enzyme overexpression was recently demonstrated in aberrant uh, bronchial cells populating fibrotic regions with, histo uh, with histone deastylized enzyme exhibiting anti-apoptotic activity via P53 uh, inhibition or c mix stimulation absorbed in cancer cells. The metabolic uh, perturbation in cancer cells is known as the Warburg effect and the meaning that uh, glycolysis is preferred over oxidative phosphorylation, even in the presence of oxygen. The Warburg effect uh, has also been absorbed upon myofibroblast differentiation, uh, a distinct physiopathologic state in uh, pulmonary fibrosis. Uh, I wanted to clarify and identify uh, the gastrointestinal involvement of stemic sclerosis and, uh, and also uh, primary lung cancer, lung cancer metastasis to a small bowel and their complications. Nearly 90% of patients with either subtype of stemic scleroderma have uh, evidence of gastrointestinal involvement. And the small bowel uh, is the second most common uh, organ affected in stemic scleroderma. Uh, the, but the gastrointestinal tract is not a common uh, site of metastasis for uh, primary lung cancer when compared with other uh, sites. 
and uh, but also primary squamous cell carcinoma of the small intestine is an extremely rare and uh, if we take uh, into consideration the complication most symptoms acute bleeding uh, depending on the size of uh, of the tumor and perforation is is observed in both disease uh, perforation may also occur in all disease uh, due to cells of fibrosis with loss of wall compliance in, uh, in, in the muscular layer of the small intestine. Now I uh, shift to my case. Uh, a 79-year-old woman was admitted to our hospital with, uh, with a due to worsening of dyspnea and sputum. Patients hospitalized for exacerbation of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. And past medical history is significant for scleroderma, and she had been treated for seven years, and also for arterial hypertension and uh, tachycardia. Uh, she had scleroderma symptoms of hand and face skin fibrosis with accompanying Reynolds phenomenon. On examination, the patient uh, was thin and appeared chronically ill. Chest CT revealed uh, uh, 5.3 uh, uh, and 4.4 centimeters healer mass on the left lung. This mass uh, obliterated the lingua of the left lung and acute atelectasis and uh, also uh, found more uh, multiple outer pulmonary window of lymph nodes uh, approximately to uh, 2.5 centimeters. A rigid bronchoscopic biopsy was performed and the pathologic uh, examination, pathologic examination uh, con confirmed the presence of non-small cell lung cancer and histologic subtypes uh, squamous cell carcinoma. And molecular testing uh, laboratory analysis uh, showed EGFR mutation, ILK rearrangement were negative. And uh, only PDL1 expression reported 15%. Also, in this patient, uh, patient uh, uh, diffuse low grade FTG uptake the small intestine wall was observed, but we were unable to uh, definitively diagnose the current case as one of the intestinal fibrosis or malignant chickening. So uh, chemotherapy with paclitaxel chemotherapeutic regimen was initiated after the 30% uh, reduction dose due to performance status. And ter ter treatment was given only once time and after uh, the 18 hours, the patient occurred uh, abdominal uh, pain, which didn't respond painkillers. And uh, Abdominal CT examination showed perforation of the small intestine. And excision surgery was performed, urgently performed to this patient. And the pathologic uh, examination confirmed the well differentiated squamous cell cancer. After the operation, patient acute neutropenia. And the neutropenia treated with uh, broad spectrum antibiotics and uh, filgrastin. But unfortunately, three days later, a uh, patient died for the uh, cause of multiple organs failure and sepsis. So in this uh, discussion part, uh, I wanted to highlight uh, my opinion that I've collected already published articles, which once again, uh, again prove that scleroderma is associated with an uh, increased risk of malignancy, especially, uh, especially age uh, of more than uh, 70 years, the patient with lim limited scleroderma were a significant risk factor for uh, to have a concrete malignancy. So, uh, and uh, if the, when GI discomfort referred by patient is uh, sometimes confused uh, with the side effect of chemotherapy. And, uh, and for this reason, requires a greater suspicion, uh, uh, greater suspicion uh, by the clinician for early identification. Uh, sometimes it show uh, this uh, clinical underdiagnosis should, uh, should pay attention. And uh, this, uh, retrospective study by Dr. Kim et al. and reported in which management with a chemotherapy resulted in a 22.2% rate of perforation versus a 21.1% uh, rate of perforation uh, without chemotherapy. It shows that perforation also occur uh, due to cerosal fibrosis. 
So, uh, a surgical treatment uh, cannot postpone in case of bowel perforation, massive bleeding, or bowel obstruction. For this reason, in uh, patients with acute abdomen and history of lung cancer, and uh, GI metastasis should be considered such as differential diagnosis. At the end, uh, I wanted to uh, say that the aim of our case related investigation to identify and discuss the various differential diagnoses of preparation of the small intestine. I hope uh, it will be helpful to know these features uh, so that physicians uh, follow up and treat acute abdominal complications adequately. And thank you very much for watching.